Ontario's first legal pot shops are now open for business. People in the province no longer have to get their legal marijuana through a government-run website. But the historic day isn't off to the start that many had anticipated. Only a few of the 25 licensed retailers are serving customers because of red tape. The CBC's Linda Ward is in Toronto to see how day one is going. Uh, Linda, I know you're there, but I'm seeing a picture of the cannabis. What's it like yeah. in the store? Well, what you're looking at are these little sort of uh, crystal jewel cases uh, that have different strains of, of cannabis inside, indica, hybrid, sativa, all different kinds. You can even pick them up. You can smell them. This one is the uh, White Widow. You can smell through that little hole there and there's a little magnifying glass. You can actually look at the buds themselves. Now this uh, store is the only one uh, in Toronto that is actually open today. The Honeypot Cannabis Company in Trendy Queen Street West neighborhood. There is a huge lineup outside, about a 40 minute wait to get in. And that lineup has been there since yesterday morning. And John O'Dwyer has come out here today. John was looking for something for the arthritis, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you find? Uh, well, they don't do topical at the moment, and they don't do medical, so they don't have anything for me. But it's interesting to look around the place. I mean, I, they have these uh, bud tenders. I love it. You know, bartender, bud tenders. Yeah. And uh, it was a guy we had, they got their little uh, iPad or whatever. They, they know their stuff. That's right, the right? bud tenders. And were they able to help you? Were they able yeah, to... Yeah, it was excellent. It was excellent. I mean, they don't have anything topical. I mean, I don't take, hey, like, um, whatever, whatever his name was, uh, you know, I... I did try to smoke once, but never inhaled. I've never, I never smoked cigarettes either because I can't inhale. So yeah, no, I haven't. But uh, but they hate the. Uh, well, yeah. it's rumored I've never had it because it would have been illegal, wouldn't it? But I, I hear that actually the topical stuff works great um, for arthritis. It's yeah. got it's CBD doesn't have any of the THC stuff in it, and it numbs the pain yeah. or numbs it. Yeah came out to try it out the first time. Well, they don't have it here, so <laughs> I'll have to go to a doctor. But the doctors are. Anyway, they're a hassle. <laughs> but now, I don't have them, don't know anything about it. The uh, the first store to open, uh, yeah. was it sort of the novelty of the first uh, yeah, store yeah, to I be just, hey, Yeah, I thought I'd just go for the fun of it, right? I had time to burn. And uh, yeah, but it's uh, one, it's like the 25 thing is BS, right? I mean, you know, free market, I thought, you know, Ford, supposed to be free market. 25 stores, that's bullshit. First Sorry, store, <laughs> the first store that's open today. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate anyway, ta you talking to us today. Uh, first store that's open today, as he mentioned, 50 bud tenders here, helping people go through the process. They get to walk around, and uh, I don't know if you can see the iPad here that they're using uh, to take orders, and then they go down to the point of sale where they pick up their product. They're being checked by security when they come in the door. Nobody under the age of 19 is allowed in. Uh, this store uh, uh, one the only one that was able to open on time uh, and certainly it has garnered quite a bit of interest here in the city sure has linda thanks for the latest you're welcome with more on the rollout of these stores in Ontario and the challenges that they're facing, I'm joined by Vamala Subramaniam. She's a reporter with the Financial Post and focuses on the cannabis industry. So only 10 of the 25 slated brick and mortar stores have opened in Ontario. Why are there so few so far? Hi, Hannah, thanks for having me. Um, it's because the lottery process in order to obtain a license for retail in Ontario only took place in January 11th. So if you think about it, you've had from January 11th till April 1st, under three months to get everything together from finding a lease for a place, uh, find hiring workers, signing supply agreements with uh, licensed producers and uh, you know, the Ontario Cannabis Store to obtain product and the process itself with the regulating, uh, the regulating body, the AGCO, is extremely complicated in that there's a pre-inspection of your shop, there's a post-inspection just before it's open. So there's a, essentially a lot of red tape that goes into opening up the cannabis store and, you know, it, ta it takes time uh, and they had under three months to get this all together. 
a lot of the retailers that won licenses didn't have um, retail experience because a lot of them were sole proprietors who so just put their name in the ballot. So yeah, I think you know all those reasons combined is why you're only seeing 10 stores. And originally, under the previous government, it was supposed to open in, conjun in conjunction with the liquor stores. That's right. So under the Liberal government, uh, the scheme was that the Ontario Cannabis Store, which now sells online cannabis, would also be in charge of brick and mortar stores. Now, what we saw happening was the Ford government came in and he said, I don't want the province to be in charge of this. I want small businesses to get a cut of the cannabis market uh, to kind of get a piece of the pie. So what he did initially was he said, everyone can apply for a license. Now, all of a sudden in December, uh, attributing this to supply shortage, he then said, uh, nope, we're just going to give out 25 licenses and these licenses will be dispensed by a lottery process. So that kind of really reduced the number of stores uh, that would come into the province, um, which is very different from other provinces, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah, and one of the big issues, and you were mentioning it there, is, and the shops are raising this, that there's a possible lack of supply, but Statistics yeah. Canada says we have more than enough. What's going on there? Yeah, so it's actually Health Canada that's uh, that kind of calculates cannabis inventory. And from their numbers, they go to the licensed producers and they ask them, hey, how much do you have sitting in your warehouse? And so the licensed producers give them the numbers. And if you look at those numbers, yes, there's definitely enough. But there seems to be some sort of hiccup between getting product from the licensed producers all across the country to stores. And to be honest with you, no one has been really able to pinpoint why that's a problem. Uh, everyone has, has theories on why that could be the case, uh, such as the a lot of the inventory is unfinished product and hasn't been packaged to finished product because of issues like excise stamps and obtaining them. Just a lot of little red tape that goes into packaging it because this is such a regulated industry. So I think this is going to iron itself out over time. Uh, and, you know, within the next few years, we're obviously the supply demand issue will even out. But for now, yeah, there's a supply shortage. Uh, the stores across the country, they're only allowed to offer approved forms of cannabis. So that leaves out edibles. But the government is looking into that. Where do things stand on getting edibles approved? Yeah, so the way, so where it stands right now legislatively is that there have been draft regulations that have been proposed. Uh, all the terms of uh, what, what kind of products are going to be legal have been laid out. So that includes vape pens, uh, certain kinds of edibles, not candies, not brownies, not anything that's appealing to kids. Um, and if, if the government, the federal government has said that that will become legal by October. However, we have, uh, you know, the legislative process to go through. The draft regulations have to be discussed and passed in the House. So uh, w once that happens, um, you know, possibly October 2019, we'll see those new line of products hit the market. Still a ways to go on that. And what are yep. you noticing? Is there any effect the physical stores are having on the black market? Um, well, it differs a lot from province to province. So in Ontario, we can't tell yet, but you know, just my estimate would say if you have 10 stores uh, open across a province, you know, the big largest province in Canada, that's hardly going to make a dent in the black market. Now you have uh, BC that has two cannabis, legal cannabis stores, but tons of unlicensed dispensaries still in Vancouver and suburbs of Vancouver. And so you really haven't seen uh, the legal market make it down to the black market. However, if you go to, you know, the prairies in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, for instance, there, there, there seem to be more legal cannabis stores per capita, so per person. And so I suspect that you will see more of an impact in those less populous provinces. But in the big provinces like BC, Ontario, Quebec, it's not making a dent yet. Van Mala, thank you for breaking this all down for us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Anna. Van Mala Subramaniam is a reporter with the Financial Post and focuses on the cannabis industry.